The story of Patek Philippe in America goes back to the 1990s. It all began when I started collecting and buying from eBay, of all places, Patek Philippe advertisements. Every day I'd check on eBay in multiple languages what ads were popping up and I would be bidding and buying these amazing pieces of ephemera from around the world. Soon I had hundreds and then over a thousand Patek Philippe ads. And, and I knew I had something special, but I was just collecting for personal reasons for my, my personal archives. And then I went to a talk. I was at Sotheby's at that time, and I went to a talk hosted by no other than Jeff Bezos, who recently put together something called Sotheby's.Amazon.com, which was this very unusual partnership that uh, was angled at uh, bringing luxury online retail to the world. It was very much ahead of its time in the late 1990s. But Bezos was talking about books and how his business really started ultimately with books. And uh, I had in the back of my mind, how much fun would it be to have a Patek Philippe book about my ads sold on Amazon? It was just a simple dream. I remember sitting in the room, listening to him to speak and say, you know what, someday I'm gonna do that. Fast forward a few years later, I always remembered that dream. I decided to do something about it. At that time, I was working for Patek Philippe. It was 2004. And every year I was going to the Basel Fair, to Basel World, and would have the opportunity to see and sometimes speak to Philippe Stern. So my idea was simple. I was going to present to him the concept of having a coffee table book all about Patek Philippe, presenting its ads, and really telling the story of Patek Philippe through these beautiful first-hand documents. So I presented this little pitch deck. It was a book called Presenting Perfection, Patek Philippe Vintage Ads by John Reardon. It was simple. It just had these um, pictures of some of my, my favorite ads throughout history. Went back to the 19th century and I went all the way up uh, to the 1980s. And I went to Mr. Stern, I sat down, I shared with him my idea. And he's a man, a few words for those of you who have met him. And he said, this is an interesting concept. He's like, you can, uh, you could do this project on, on two conditions. You do it on your own time and you do it with your own budget. I enthusiastically said, yes. Before I left the room that day, I asked Mr. Stern, could you sign one of these first three books? And he very kindly, generously wrote what you could see before you today. This beautiful Dear John, and he challenged me to do a better version for the next round. I gave him a copy of one of these books and uh, went back to work. Now, the back to work lasted three years. I was so dedicated to this project. And, and many of you out there have had this experience where you just forget about everything else and you just throw yourself wholeheartedly into a project. All of a sudden, sleeping and, and eating became secondary. <laughs> I was, was writing 24 seven and also holding a job at the time. Three years later, the next version of Patek Philippe in America was born. Now, this particular version which I call now version two, uh, was done in many different styles as I was developing uh, the, the concept with the designers and the publishers in order to make this book make sense, to tell the story in the best way possible. Within these pages, I soon found I had 50,000 words of a story that just kept being written. There was so much research that went into this and it was thanks to countless interviews I had with dear friends and colleagues, including Werner Sahn, the late chairman of Patek Philippe in the United States, uh, Hank Edelman, um, president and, and now chairman of uh, Patek Philippe USA. And of course, uh, Tanya Edwards, who's now my colleague at Collectability, who was vice president of Patek Philippe USA at the time. I had this amazing resource of people who, were helping me understand what really happened in the history of Patek Philippe. And I put it in writing, thanks to their help. And that's what's within these pages. So the second version, as I call it, version two of Patek Philippe in America, shared all of these stories and used all of the ads to present the history of Patek Philippe. 
it's fun to see how within this version two era, the title kept changing. Here we have Patek Philippe, the foremost watch, a history in American advertising. And ultimately we, we uh, decided to call it Patek Philippe in America, marketing the world's foremost watch. We had a lot of back and forth with the editors at that point in time for what title we should land on for this book. So version two was, was wrapped in 2008, early 2008. And by late 2008, Patek Philippe in America, as we know it, was born with this large format. We found that this better showed the ads in all of their glory, having this larger size. And as the stories kept getting longer and we had so much new scholarship, we just needed the, the extra page and the extra real estate to tell these stories properly. And just like thumbing through these pages, it just brings back so many memories of so many people that helped me put this book together. And most notably, my wife, Andra, she was with me every step of the way in putting this book together. And I'm, I'm forever in her debt, uh, in service for uh, helping me with this, uh, this book. So when version three was done, this was fall of 2008. I was able to send the first copy to Philippe Stern in Geneva. I was so proud of it. I was so excited and so nervous. Like, what would he say about the Patek Philippe in America book? I anxiously awaited and then finally I received a letter signed Philippe Stern and his son, Thierry Stern, congratulating me on this achievement. And soon after, Philippe Stern placed an order for books that uh, he wanted to offer to Patek Philippe retailers, also sell at the Patek Philippe Museum. And then this part is just was unbelievable to me at the moment. Mr. Stern generously offered to put an advertisement for the new book within the Patek Philippe magazine. This, this just left me speechless. And here's a copy of that ad from early 2009 within the Patek Philippe magazine. It was, this ad was translated in eight languages. It was seen around the world. It was almost a full circle moment for me to see an ad of my book about Patek Philippe ads within the Patek Philippe magazine. It was just uh, made me speechless. And then everyone who bought a Patek Philippe watch would receive a leather wallet with their certificate of origin and opposite this tiny book called The Collector's Library. So everyone that bought a Patek Philippe during this period of time was able to open that pamphlet. And there it was. There was a picture of my book, Patek Philippe in America, with a little description of what the book was about. And it gave the links that people can go, go ahead and buy this book directly from Patek Philippe. To say this was a dream come true is, is just an understatement. And even though this project was completely independent, it was done on my own time, I couldn't have done it without amazing friends at Patek Philippe, amazing colleagues at Patek Philippe, and the trust that they gave me to tell the story of the brand. And uh, this book today is basically sold out. So after my book was uh, presented to the world in the Patek Philippe magazine, it started showing up in some unexpected places. We made a, a crossover to pop culture. And one of the ones that shocked me the most was Star Magazine. Now, if you know the American tabloids, Star Magazine is one of the finest. And this is from uh, 2010. You could open up and see this tiny little blurb about the new hot book. And there's a picture of Brad Pitt, who's a huge fan of Patek Philippe, and my book, Patek Philippe in America, within Star Magazine. It was just completely unexpected surprise to see it picked up in the mass media. So there were only 1,500 copies of this in the print run. And by 2010, they were basically sold out. I, I kept a few back. I've always tried to keep a few for the future, but uh, that 1,500 copies uh, sold quite quickly. It was such an adventure looking back putting that book together. And, uh, and it truly was a, a dream come true, sharing the story of Patek Philippe with a wider audience, specifically the story of Patek Philippe in America. It was and continues to be such an honor to present the history of Patek Philippe 
in America to the world. And this book was my first grand effort to do that. And whenever I see a copy of my book pop up on eBay, I, I just smile because now they're bringing over a thousand dollars. In fact, on Amazon, I recently saw a copy that the person was asking $3,700 for a copy of my book. It's just great fun to see that this uh, book is still appreciated and still can be seen in many of the most important horological libraries in the world. So in honor of the 15 year anniversary since the initial release of this book, I'm going to release some of the last copies that uh, exist for sale. There'll be 10 copies that will be available on Amazon. If you don't already have it in your library, I hope you can chase down one of these last few copies. Because the story of Patek Philippe in America is not just the story of building a brand in the United States. For me personally, it's a story of how my dream came true to put that story in print. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and also TikTok. Until next time, enjoy the hunt. Thank you.